Hey guys, and welcome back to the CTFC Perspective. And in today's video is episode five of our new series, EFL Transfer Talk. If this is the first episode you watch this series and you haven't watched the previous one, click on the top of your screen now and you can watch the previous episode. But if it is the only the latest news that you want to hear about, stay tuned in this one because we are going to be bringing you 10 of the latest transfer stories. Seven of them are going to be fast fire transfers. So I'm just going to be going the basic information information about the transfer and the player itself whereas for the final three I'm going to go more in depth about the player's career and the deal itself as well. Just before we do go into this video, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, subscribing to the channel and smashing that notification bell so you know when a video goes live because it would mean the world to us. But the whole point of this series is to get the latest transfer information to you guys without wasting any more of your time. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first quickfire transfer is Liam Shepard as he has joined Newport County. Three other clubs were interested but is now a Newport player. For a long time now, Wickham Wanderers has been keen on Hull City defender Ryan Tafasoli and they've managed to secure the deal. The third story of the day is for Stephen Humphreys. Many offers have been put on the table, including an offer from Bristol Rovers, but no offers have been accepted as of today. Here is one for you Blackburn fans, as you have signed Connor McBride on a free transfer from Celtic. And if you Blackburn fans were interested, he signed a two-year deal with an option to have an additional 12 months at the club. Next up, we move on to Oldham, as they've signed midfielder Ben Garrity from Blackpool on a season-long loan. Back-to-back -back loans now, as Shrewsbury Town has secured Matija Sarkic on loan from Wolves. Recently promoted Wickham Wanderers have been successful in their swoop for former Manchester City goalkeeper Curtis Anderson as they've secured the player on a one-year deal. Now with all seven of your quickfire transfers out of the way, we go to our final free transfer of the video where we go more in depth. Okay, so the first in-depth transfer is Josh Windass as he's been secured by Sheffield Wednesday. He's returned to Hillsborough after spending half of last season on loan at Wigan. I can't really tell you much about the transfer itself as it was an undisclosed fee, but I'm going to try and tell you a bit about the player's career so you can tell a little bit more about the player. So he is right footed, he is 26 years old and he is very versatile. The Englishman can play attacking midfield, centre midfield, centre forward and even on right wing if he is asked. For his age and his position, he has done quite well for his career as he has played 230 games in his career and he's got a goal contribution every 230 minutes, which for a player at the lower levels and obviously he hasn't reached his prime yet of his career, it's pretty decent. This is as in this time he's got himself 54 goals and 30 assists. But it's not just League 2 he has played in, he has also played a lot in the Championship as well. As well as 52 games in the Scottish Premiership, a handful of games in the FA Cup, as well as another handful in the Europa League qualifying rounds. This is because he mainly started his career at Crinton Stanley, moving on a two-year deal to Rangers, where he has then obviously gone to his previous club, Wigan and Sheffield Wednesday, respectively. Next up, we move on to our second deal that we're going to go in depth into, but it's not actually a completed transfer for the, one of the first times in this series. It's actually a transfer rumour, and that is Ollie Watkins. He is linked to both West Bromwich Albion and Aston Villa, but he is linked to be around £18 million, which I believe an absolute bargain, but obviously a player that Brentford would love to keep hold of. The forward is only 24 years of age and the Englishman has predominantly played striker this year but in other systems previously he has played both on the left wing and on the right wing as well. He spent two years at Exeter City before making his move to Brentford in 2017. And the young forward has played 221 games in his career, mainly being in the championship due to the last few years of his career being with Brentford. 132 of those being in the championship getting 45 goals in that time as well as 16 assists meaning every 240 minutes in the championship he gets a goal contribution which is very very good obviously just missing out on top scorer last championship season to Mitrovic but either way if either Aston Villa West 
from a Jarvian or maybe another club going for him. I think if you can get him for around £20 million or less, he's young, he's versatile, he can improve, he can play any one of the forward lines. He's fast. And what I've seen of Brentford this season, he's got really good hold at play as well as using his pace, he can use his strength. And I just think it's an absolute bargain. It does look like Aston Villa is kind of losing their patience with the deal and they kind of maybe are going for replacements as they can't find the right price or go through the right negotiations with Brentford. But like I've said, if you can get him for around 20 million or less, it's an absolute bargain. And your final transfer of the day, we're returning to Aston Villa as they are set to sign Matty Cash. Matty Cash also got the interest of Fulham and Sheffield United. And after Sheffield United had such a great season, you can see why big clubs were interested in him because he did have an absolutely amazing season last season for Nottingham Forest. He's been at Nottingham Forest since the under-18s, where he did go on a short-term loan to Dagenham and Redbridge. But after his loan, he has stayed at Nottingham Forest and just improved every single season. He is only 23 years of age with both English and Polish citizenship. Fun fact, if you wanted it, he can play right back, right wing back. And he has also played a few matches in the centre of midfield and pushed high of that right hand side as well, maybe for a counter attack. But this is what he can play. He's right footed, which is also good because it's the most basic type of cross which is needed. Some clubs do like to cut inside, but if you're just uh, if you're just needing a right back to maybe make those occasional overlapping runs down the right hand side and whip a ball into the box and maybe get your headers in, try and get a goal. This is great for what you need. Obviously, a preferred right back needs a right foot. He has played 154 games in his career, so reasonably experienced for such a young age. Again, most of those coming in the championship, 129 with 13 goals and 11 assists within that time. To which works out to roughly a goal contribution every 834 minutes. So for your right back, getting a goal every, let's say, nine games is just a little round number. That isn't too bad. I know, obviously, a lot of the prime right-backs, like you're talking Trent Alexander-Arnold right now, are getting assists after assists and just breaking records. But for a team that are reasonably defensive, like Aston Villa, that just like to hit on the counter-attack, this can be very, very good. And if he gets a goal contribution every now and then in the Premier League, that just adds to his value. I'm unsure of the actual confirmed price for Matty Cash, but I do know that it will cost Aston Villa quite a bit as they did get a £10 million bid rejected. So obviously it's more than that, but I do not have a confirmed price as the deal is not fully confirmed. And that is it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. I know I asked you previously in the video, but if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, liking the video and turning that notification bell on so you know when a video goes live. If you have any questions or queries, drop a comment down in the comment section and we will most likely like them and reply to them. Our socials will also be down in the description. So our Instagram, our Twitters, if you want to follow us on there, that'll be absolutely amazing. And if you want to drop us a message, maybe more privately or personally, it's much easier to do on there than in the comment section i really hope you guys did enjoy this one two videos like this will be on screen very shortly and i'll see you guys in the next one see ya